This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. It's no big secret that some reptiles make amazing first pets. Some, however, don't. One of the most common mistakes that we see in the reptile hobby is someone buying their first reptile as a cute little baby and then giving it away when they can no longer afford to care for it or no longer have the space for it. To make things a bit easier for all you first time reptile owners out there, I put together a list of the five most common pet reptiles that you should probably avoid taking home if you're a beginner. I'll even throw in some better alternatives for each one. You're welcome. My name is Jason Miller and you're watching Five Weird Animal Facts. Number one, the green iguana. For a long time, these beauties were the most common pet reptiles in the United States, and hatchlings can be found at many pet stores for as cheap as $20. But that $20 investment quickly multiplies when your adorable baby lizard grows to be over six feet long. Not only are they big, they're big and arboreal. In their natural habitat in the forests of Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, green iguanas are most at home in the canopy, only descending from the treetops to mate, lay eggs, or find a better tree. In fact, male green iguanas are very territorial and will often claim an entire tree as their property. Obviously, this is very difficult to mimic in a captive environment. I've seen some absolutely fantastic custom-made iguana enclosures, but that sort of setup requires much more time and money than most first-time keepers are able to invest. What attracts people to iguanas is that perfect mixture of spiky yet adorable. Another lizard that shares these qualities but doesn't get nearly as big is the bearded dragon. Beardies are probably the most common pet lizard on the market today, and maintaining a desert habitat for this foot-long reptile is fairly simple with the correct lighting. Not to mention, most bearded dragons are puppy dog tame from the moment that they hatch, while green iguanas can sometimes have a bit of an attitude. Number two, the Sulcata tortoise. Native to Northern Africa, Sulcatas are now being captive bred in large numbers, and in the past decade, they've become a fairly common sight at reptile expos. Let's face it, baby tortoises are the cutest creatures on the face of the earth. If you look a baby tortoise in the eyes, and your heart doesn't instantly melt, you're probably dead inside. But before you even think about taking one home, you need to seriously consider the kind of commitment that you're making. Sulcatas are the third largest species of tortoise in the world, reaching roughly two and a half feet in length and weighing over 100 pounds, although individuals weighing over 200 pounds are not unheard of. And they're basically the cows of the reptile world in the sense that they spend most of their time grazing, eating patches of grass and vegetation as they walk the perimeter of their enclosure. And even though they move slowly, they are very very active animals. Because of this, they need a very large enclosure and should be kept in outside pens for most of the year. So for people like me who live in the northern parts of the US, a sulcata probably isn't the best idea. But before you get too bummed out, know that there is a better option. The Russian tortoise is by far the most common pet tortoise in the pet trade today, and for good reason. They're relatively easy to care for and only reach about 9 inches in length. But before purchasing a Russian tortoise, please, please, please make sure that you're buying one that is captive bred. Like far too many tortoises, Tortoise species, Russian tortoises are listed as threatened, but this doesn't stop them from being regularly imported for the pet trade. And by the way, number three, large constrictors. Reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, African rock pythons, and green anacondas are very rewarding and intelligent snakes to keep as pets, but they're also the four largest snakes on the planet. Not only does this mean that they require large enclosures, it also means that they can be very dangerous to inexperienced keepers. I can speak from experience when I say that a bite from a juvenile reticulated python doesn't exactly tickle, and a bite from an adult can be serious enough to require stitches. Of course, no animal will bite without reason, so it's important to get as much experience as you can with smaller python species to understand their behavior and then work your way up from there. I recommend starting with a ball python. There's a good reason why these guys are the most popular pet snakes on the planet. They stay small, don't require a ton of space, and are generally very docile. Number four, the red-eared slider. I don't know if you've picked up on the pattern here, but this turtle is yet another species that is small and cute as a baby, but requires much more care as an adult. This mostly aquatic turtle reaches an adult length of 8 to 10 inches. They are very active and therefore require a big enclosure. A 60 gallon tank should be the bare minimum for two adult turtles. Red-eared sliders have become established in the wild throughout the United States because many people buy them as babies and then release them into the wild when they're no longer small and easy to care for. Another reason the big tank is needed for these guys is because they produce a lot of waste and frequent water changes are necessary even with a filter running. Instead of a red-eared slider, I recommend getting an eastern box turtle as your first pet turtle. They stay smaller, usually between 4 to 8 inches, and spend almost all of their time on land which makes cleaning the enclosure much less of a hassle. Number five, the American alligator. This one should probably go without saying, but as someone who used to work at a reptile rescue facility, I've seen the same mistake made far too often. You go online, find a baby alligator for sale, and then have it shipped to your door so you can put it in a fish tank and show it off to your friends. 
A common misconception is that if you keep a gator in a small enclosure and don't feed it too much, it will stay small and you will have a baby alligator forever. While this method can severely stunt the growth of an alligator, it also causes serious health problems and psychological issues. These are one of the most intelligent reptiles on the planet, and they need a lot of space, a diverse diet, and plenty of enrichment in order to live happy and healthy lives. So instead of an alligator, get a betta fish. If you were seriously considering an alligator as a beginner reptile, then you're not ready for reptiles. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below what animals and topics you want to see in future episodes. Like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to Animal Bites TV for more awesome animal things and stuff. Check out all my social media garbage if you feel like it. And until next time, my friends, my name is Jason Miller, and I'll see you next Monday on 5 Weird Animal Facts. As always, Jason from Five Weird Animal Facts killed it and had an amazing show. If you want to see more of his content, just go ahead and click right here and watch more of his videos. And of course, if you want to see other cool animal content, including my show, Snake Bites TV, every Wednesday, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it.